the main storylines, obviously Dan Mullen and, and everything that is around him. My thought last week after the Sanford game, there was a lot of talk. We'll take one step back. After the South Carolina game, I heard a lot of talk that, well, it's going to depend on the last three games of Mondale Mullen. If, if, he, if he's 3-0, and his job is good. If he's 2-1, and well, it depends if he loses to Florida State or Missouri. But if he, lo- if he might have his job there. If he loses to Missouri and Florida State, um, his job will be gone. I, I, didn't, I didn't agree with that at all. And that was weeks ago. I, I, didn't, I thought your mind was made up before – or excuse me, your mind was made up after that South Carolina game. If you're the administration and you're Scott Strickland. Do you keep Dan Mullen or do you want to not keep Dan Mullen? You you want to move on. After everything has transpired, I think it's pretty self-explanatory that both parties just need to go. Dan Mullen doesn't care to be there, my opinion. And for administration, I don't think he wants Dan Mullen to be there anymore. This is the same time Dan Mullen just got an extension to be paid $7.5 million each year. And he got this extension in the summer. Guys, I, I see your comments. I want to talk about Dan Mullen. And I want to say this what I, from what I heard today on radio with Matt Hayes uh, and what Spurrier said. And then I'll get to your guys' comments. So this is, this is where everything started to unravel. This is what Matt Hayes said. National college football writer. He's covered Spurrier, covered Urban Meyer. Um, Wrote for the Florida Times Union in Jacksonville. Um, writes now for Saturday Down South, and he hosts the show XL Primetime on 1010XL, um, the flagship station for the Gators. Matt Hayes mentioned what started the unraveling with Florida wasn't the LSU game. It wasn't the, the shoe throwing. It was when Dan Mullen got that recruiting violation. And it's ironic because Dan Mullen obviously is not a good recruiter. And obviously, we're seeing that. Dan Mullen broke a recruiting violation when you could not have face-to-face contact with anybody during COVID. I think it was from March of 2020 all the way to, I think it was June of this year. So March of 2020 to June of 2021, you could not have any face-to-face interaction. Players could not come to the, the have an official visit, and you could not go to have in-home visits. Dan Mullen went all the way out to Oregon, of all places, took a plane out there. It's for a five-star player, and you can't do that. Now, keep in mind, Florida has not had a recruiting violation since before I was born. I I think the last time I had one was uh, when Amon Smith played in the late 80s. So that happens. Scott Strickland, excuse me, Dan Mullen, didn't really. He's like, I don't have. I don't have to explain myself, and and that's that's where the, the the tension began between the administration, Scott Strickland, and Dan Mullen. Steve Spurrier, who is on College Sports Today with Terry Norvell. Terry Norvell's been on the show a couple of times after a couple of Gator games. Steve Spurrier said this. Now keep in mind, Steve Spurrier, for anybody that doesn't know, won a Heisman Trophy, coached Florida to Florida's first national title, took them to Providence and has made Florida what they are today pretty much, if you don't know. Steve Spurrier also the guy that has an office in Florida's football facility across from Dan Mullen and Scott Strickland. So use that as the backdrop. Steve Spurrier said, quote, on this show, College Sports Day with Terry Norvell, Steve Spurrier, Nobody knows exactly what the coaching situation is right now. Nobody is talking about it. I think it depends on what happens in these next two games, Missouri and Florida State. Think about that. Nobody knows exactly what the coaching situation is right now. Nobody is talking about it. Basically saying, um, yeah, he's not going to be here for long. If you remember what Jeremy, Jeremy Foley said, the former athletic director before Scott Strickland, he said, what happened, what needs to be done eventually, needs to be done immediately. Also, so that, that's, one, that's one snippet. After the Georgia game this year, this is, also, this is all from Matt Hayes. This is what he talked about on the show this morning. After the Georgia game, on Sunday, I guess it is, Dan Mullen had a, had a meeting with the, uh, with the team. And he lit into them. I don't know what he said, but he lit into them. This is what sources close to to Florida 
told Matt Hayes. And there's a lot of upperclassmen on Florida's team. You have your obviously your your, your COVID seniors, your sixth year seniors, your fifth year seniors, your four year guys, and then juniors that are going to leave for for the NFL next year. So you have a lot of upperclassmen. And apparently there's a lot of put Dan Mullen lit into them, players pushed back. Dan Mullen apparently broke the podium and walked and stormed out. Apparently that's what happened. Mark Long asked him the following presser, did this happen? He said, of course not, this didn't happen, yada, yada, yada. Obviously, he's not going to admit it. So that happens on Sunday. The presser was Monday, and then Florida has the performance it did against South Carolina. And then if you remember what South Carolina was at post game, what Dan Mullen said, Dan Mullen said, we had a good practice uh, all week, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> and if you know anything about football, um, if you go out and you play a game and, and it's pitiful, um, that's because you didn't have a good week of practice, whatever it is. So that happened. And then you look at recruiting right now. Um, Jimbo Fisher has the number one recruiting class. Looks like he will at AM. And then you trail Georgia and you trail Alabama. Miami has a better recruiting class than Florida right now. Florida can get their guys in state. I, the last I saw last week, Florida has four guys in the state of Florida, four, in the top 50 in the state of Florida, you know, the hotbed for recruiting, Texas, California, Florida, and Mullen can't recruit. Mullen can't get these guys. Also, another thing, um, one big coaching change that happened in the offseason that not a lot of people have talked about in the media um, was when Brian Johnson left Florida. When Brian Johnson left Florida, Matt Hayes said that, again, he, he I, I trust him because I interned on the show with him two years ago. If he says something, there's a lot of truth to it. He has a lot of insight. He has a lot of sources. And whenever he says stuff, it's usually it usually comes out to be true. When Brian Johnson left Florida for the NFL to go be the Eagles QB coach, Matt Hayes said that people tell him that Brian Johnson is the was the only guy on that staff that could check Dan Mullen's ego. He was the only guy that could tell Dan Mullen no. If Dan Mullen wanted to do something, Brian Johnson said no, it didn't happen. And no one else is like that on the staff, apparently. Brian Johnson leaves, and you bring in a guy, Garrett McGee, who, from what Matt Hayes said, uh, McGee probably would not have a Power 5 job if it weren't for Florida. Um, he was with Arkansas in 2011. He came from Missouri. Um, he's coached receivers, coached offense. <sighs> and Brian Johnson, it seems to be eventually, um, he's going to be the next hot shot guy in the NFL. He's going to get a head coaching job in a couple of years. Th again, this is not my opinion. This is what Matt Hayes has been saying. So figure all that in together. You have the recruiting violation that Madame Mullen did when he didn't care. That caused friction between the administration and the AD at Florida, Scott Strickland. You have Steve Spurrier said, Quote, nobody knows exactly what the coaching situation is right now. Nobody is talking about it. I think it depends on what happens in these next two games. A guy that has offices in Ben Hill Griffin Stadium across from Dan Mullen and St Scott Strickland. And, oh, and by the way, something else, something else I forgot to mention. The host of the show, Terry, did not ask Steve Spurrier what his, what his comment was or what, what he thinks about Dan Mullen and the coaching situation. He just said it. It what he was asked. He was talking about the game today, yesterday on the show, and he just he just blatantly said it. Now, if you if you guys know anything about Spurrier, he coached before I was even thought of. I was born in '98. Steve Spurrier is always well calculated. Steve Spurrier just doesn't blow smoke when he says something. He's usually, he's usually poking, taking a shot at somebody. Florida State, Georgia, you know, free shoes, uh, you know, you know, one hang half half a hundred, and. He just said that. So there's a lot of truth to that, which is um, which is very surprising. So um, that, that's the biggest thing that I wanted to get off my chest, um, all of that stuff. 